Wow. What is up, guys? I'm Cole Fortier. We're going to be looking at a 38th place pure Endymion deck. And wow. I, I'm not shocked to see that this got 38th place. I'm going to be honest. Um, I'm more shocked that for week one, uh, this is one of the main things we got. Of course, we got Zephyr running around. I heard rumor that there was a Gandora FTK running around somewhere. We'll, we'll talk about that later. But yes, this is Endymion. This was piloted by Drabil Braithwaite. Um, he actually finished 38 out of... Oh man, it was... How many people was this? Uh, it was a good chunk of people. It was nine rounds. Um, yeah, it was just a nine round tournament. So, I mean, that, that's pretty fucking impressive. I'm not gonna fucking shit on him too hard for that. Like, that's actually really fucking good. Considering, like, everything was all said and done, and this man did relatively well. So his tournament report is he won round one, 2 1 against Salad. Uh, round two, he won, or he lost 1 2 against Drago. Uh, round three was against M Pendulum Magicians. He won that 2 1. Uh, round four, he beat Salad 2 1. Uh, round five, he lost to Salad 2 1, or 1 2. Round six, he beat Salad 2 1. So. I mean, we only lost to one salad out of five. Like, that's pretty good. Round seven was against Pendulum Mission. He won 2-0. Round eight, he played Guru. He won 2-1. And round nine was against Orcust. He saw a mat. He said he saw a matchup is pretty easy, even though it's my worst matchup other than Draco, which I hate. Uh, he didn't play any strikers, which, funny enough, is my auto-win matchup. Losing to Orcust round nine sucked because it was uh, hashtag liminal dra uh, dangerous. So, I I do think overall, to see more of the Endymion structure deck kind of come together as a whole is not a bad thing. Um, I think a lot of people have kind of gone on the general consensus of, you're either going to play this with Zephra or you're going to play this with Pendulum Magician, which, I mean, I'll be honest with you, like, those were the two ways I wanted to go with this myself. Because just in terms of like the more consistent engines, yeah, why would you, why would you not go towards the things that you know to be more consistent or consistent overall? So it was yeah, it's thirty eighth place out of four hundred people, which and he was the only Endymion in top cut. So I mean that's the price of internet itself. So congratulations, Jabril. Like you definitely you got me on semantics being pure Endymion. Um, and I mean, this is only for one regional, and this is for Charlotte. So, let's kind of talk about what he's doing here, and other some things like that. So, we have two Abyss Actor Curtain Riser. This is going to be your standard. If you're trolling the monsters, you can swap some of this card from your Pendulum Zone. Okay, we understand that. This is going to be your starter to get into Electromite. Uh, we do play the one copy of Destrudo, which, I mean, once again, like, this is going to be to make Dawn Dragster and the other things. Uh, we are playing triple copies of Endymion, the Mighty Master of magic. So this is the guy that uh, removes six co spell counters, special summons this card, uh, and then he gets the ability to return stuff, which this card is actually really, really good for what it gives to the deck, like, actually. And then we have Triple Master, or Magister of Endymion. Each time spell counters placed on it, or each time a spell counter is activated, place spell counter on this card. Remove three spell counters from this card, so summon both this card from your Pendulum Zone and one face-up monster from your extra deck. So, I mean, as long as you, like, need a combo extend, this guy's going to get you there. Monster effect, you can only special summon one Magister of Endymion once per turn. When this card declares an attack, you can place spell counter on it. Once per turn, quick effect, remove three. Special summon one monster from your deck that you can place a spell counter on. This card in the Monster Zone is destroyed. It gets to go back on the Pendulum Scale. I mean, he's an 8 scale. Like, this is really good. Now, of course, we've seen the price tag of a Garuda shoot up this week. So, no other cards your Pendulum Zone. You target one other spell and trap card on the field. Destroy both this card and that card. Each time a spell counter is uh, activated, place one spell counter on this card uh, after it resolves. When your opponent normal or special summons a monster, you can remove three spell counters from your field. The special will summon this card from your hand and then return the opponent's monster to the hand. You only need one of this. I think any more than that, you're going to run into clogging issues. Our boy, the mythical Beast Jackal, if you no other cards in your Pendulum Zone, you can target one card you control and that you can place a spell counter on. Destroy this card if you do place a spell counter on it. It's actually really good. And each time a spell card 
is activated. Place Spell Counter on this card. And after that card resolves, uh, then you can remove three Spell Counters from the field. Tribute this card, special summon one Mystical Beast Effect Monster from your deck. So this is essentially a Lone Fire Blossom when you get to three counters. Uh, it's not particularly that good, but I mean, it does what it needs to do. Of course, you guys know about Jackal King himself and all the fun things he does. And then we have two copies of Master Cerberus. Then, of course, we have one copy of the Reflection of Endymion. So, Pendulum Reflect, each time a spell card or a card is activated, place a spell counter on this card. Remove three spell counters from this card, special summon both this card from your deck and one Pendulum Monster from your hand. They can place a spell counter on and place a spell counter on that. And then, of course, we also have the. You can only splash summon one of this per turn. If this card is splashed, then you can target one card your opponent controls. Uh, and one card, yeah, with a spell counter on it. Except this card, return the opponent's card to your hand, and place the same number of spell counters on that card, and you return it to the hand. And then uh, when this card, spell counter is destroyed, you can add one Endymion card from your deck to your hand. So, I mean, she's not bad at 1850, but, I mean, her star's, her star's kind of heavy out there. Now, of course, the best card in the deck is actually, I believe it's the Servant. Each time a spell counter is, or remove three spell counters, Special summon uh, one from your deck with a thousand or more attack, and then you get to place spell counters on them, which, god, this card is so good. Only special summon one once per turn, but this card with spell counter can attack your opponent directly. During your opponent's turn quick effect, you can discard one card to place a spell counter on each card that you control that you can place a spell counter on. This card in your monster zone is destroyed. Let's go back to your pendulum scale and place the same number of spell counters that it had on it as a monster. Hmm. This card is actually... Like I said, this... Magister and Big Fatty are like the best ones that the deck actually has. Now, we are playing two copies of Dark Worm, one Gate Zero. Uh, this is pretty standard just because, like, you're not tutoring for the engines like you used to, but you are still making a claim to do the same things that you used to do with Pendulums. Get you a zero scale, allows you to Pendulums, and it's everything that you need, right? All in the form of generic revival. Uh, we're still playing two Dragon Shrine, one Foolish Braille to drop the Dark Worm so we can still combo. We are playing two copies of old uh, Citadel of Endymion. Each time a spell counter is activated, place one spell counter on this card after it resolves. If a card with a spell counter will be destroyed, place its spell counters on this card. And once per turn, if you would activate a card effect by removing spell counters from a card you control, you remove that many spell cards from this card. If this card on the field will be destroyed, you remove one spell counter from this card instead. Thank God Cosmic Cyclone exists. Now, we also have two Mythical Institution. Each time a face-up Mythical Beast Pendulum Monster you control is destroyed by a battle or card effect, place two spell counters in this card. Once per turn, remove any number of spell counters from this card to add one monster from your hand, or from your deck to your hand, or face up extra deck with a level equal to the number of cards removed, or spell counters removed. Then you can place a spell counter on this card. If this card in the field be destroyed by card effect, remove a spell counter from this card instead. Ugh, these things aren't going anywhere. And of course, we have Triple Desires, and then we have True Copies of the Spell Power Mastery. So you can add an Endymion card from your deck to your hand, and then you can count the number of Spell Power, Grasp, and Power Mastery you control or have in your graveyard. Place that many Spell or Counters among them you control that you can place Spell Counters on. You only activate one Spell Mastery per turn. Hey, it's our Roto. Now, of course, we do have two copies of Terraforming. We have one copy of Triple vs. Dragon, one copy of Ceruja, one Unicorn, one Phoenix, one Heretic Seal of the Heavenly Dragons, one Electromite, one LP, one copy of Agrippane, two copies of the Daybreaker, the Shining Magical Warrior, so it's two spell casters to make it. And when this card is laying, somebody place one spell counter, it gains 300 attack for each spell counter on it. You can activate each of these the following effects of Daybreaker, the Shining Magical Warrior, once per turn. So if a spell caster, monster, is special to his own, this card points to place a spell counter on this card. Those two spell counters from this card target one card in the field and destroy it. Just very generic spellcaster support. We have one copy of Borload, one copy of Dawn Dragster, Quantum Dragon, Arcanite, and Ade's Vortex Dragon. Side deck down here we have triple copies of Droll and Lockbird, triple copies of Ghost Ogre, two copies of Sphere Mode, two copies of MST, triple copies of Even Match, and two copies of Red Reboot. One thing he did want me to include in this too was Evenly never really came in for him in terms of siding. Uh, he said there was just really no real reason for it. Like, just in terms of general support and things like that, there just, just was never really needed for him. So, once again, congratulations, Drabil. I'm very happy to see that this deck did very good for you. I'm glad to see that we actually got the chance to see Pure Endymion do something in today's format. 
And then it's just not been all hustle rustle and things like that. Like, yes, this is the fierce look of pure endymion in competitive play that we've seen, but you know, what do you guys think? Please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think about his deck. And well guys, I look forward to seeing more innovation in the future. Peace out. The ride never well truly ends. Thank you, patrons. Without you guys, I don't know what I'd be wearing in these videos. I might be a truffle shuffle and all over again. Guys, please also check out Vancole 40 for some awesome Vanguard content. Some other interesting stuff you might find up here on the left or in the description as well. Thanks for watching.